Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. This time this is something random that I found. Uh, it's an advertisement thing that uh, they mail you. And uh, this is for Fastenal? I have no idea. Anyway, this is, it says Gillette Stadium. And uh, where industry meets innovation. Anyway, this is like a mailer thing that they send companies out uh, who could potentially use whatever the heck this service is. I have no idea, honestly. I've done no research on this. Randomly came across this, and uh, I knew I had to have it because it is one of these video players. There we go. Uh, yeah. Let's just turn down that volume. Anyway, it's like an advertisement video thing, and I'll uh, dim the lights. Uh, yeah, you can only play pause or adjust the volume, and there's a thing that comes up on the screen right about there that says what the volume level is. I'm just going to turn that down. It's, uh, kind of hard to see. It's, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, it's a video advertisement, which is kind of insane. Uh, not that long ago, something like, you know, a little video player about yay big that can play digital files... Would have been something that'd be stupidly expensive, and now they're just shoving these into bits of cardboard and paper. Oh yeah, by the way, there's a USB mini for charging the whole thing. I almost have a feeling that when I open this up, there's probably going to be a bunch of other features that aren't used, like maybe other buttons for like fast forward and rewind. And I, I really hope that there's a micro SD card or something that I can put my own video files on. Otherwise... If you plug this into a computer, it might show up as a mass storage drive, so you can put your own videos on. Hopefully they didn't like lock down how you can add videos. I kind of want to put my own video into this, which is just absolutely insane. Every time you open it, there's a magnet. There you go. There's a magnet that keeps it shut that obviously there's like a hall sensor or something that uh, detects that. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> I guess I need to open this up. Which is going to be annoying because it's going to start trying to play every single... Oh, there's a little battery indicator, too. That appears very shortly and then disappears. Uh, it looks like this is just adhesived. So, uh, just going to try and cut my way through. Probably a sharper implement would have been better, but... Always... I, I have seen other channels like take these apart, but uh, they're all slightly different and uh, I was really interested to know what's inside and if I could hack this or mod it. Okay, there we go. Eh, come, on. come on, you little piece of cardboard. Okay, so we are in like Flynn and uh, yeah, this is basically just one of those... Uh, little mp3 players <laughs> that you used to be able to buy there's a hall effect sensor there so that clearly detects a magnet that's located here there's a, like just a run-of-the-mill lcd you can see a little cable for the back like there this is the data they just hot glue everything in which is insane there's a lithium-ion battery uh, 1500 milliamp hours here uh, this is the size uh, Maybe? No, that's not the size. That's the date code. 2023. So, uh, 318 2023. That's pretty recent. Uh, the size is 60, 40, 60, it looks like. And the buttons are just funky foamed in. Wow, that is... Mm. Little speaker, also 8-ohm speaker. Uh, 2 watts, also hot glued in. Lots of foam. Uh, just tape holding stuff down. And uh, you can see... Yeah, there are, so these switches just are wired straight to pads, and there are extra pads, so clearly there are extra button functionality. Maybe it's not programmed in the software. It probably is, I bet you, uh, that will do other things, so I wonder, I'm going to probably try to pull this out, and uh, I'll short the pads and see if it does other things. Uh, we have... This is going to be the flash memory. There is no SD card, unfortunately, like I was hoping. That would have been easy. Then you just pop that out, pop that into a computer, put new files on. There's a flash memory chip here, which if I get the lighting right, it's HY, it's a Hynix, HY27UF081G2A. So 08, this might only be like, 
I don't know, like a megabyte, two megabytes, eight megabytes. Probably not super high capacity, probably just enough for that video file or something. Uh, date code here also shows uh, 3 something 23. So this all originates from 2023, it looks like. Uh, the main chip is marked V100FP40PMP. Uh, so portable media player. So obviously this chip is designed to be a portable media player. And there's a RAM chip next to it, which is uh, also Hynix. Uh, HY5DU56. 1622FTP-5-5 is the speed grade. Uh, yeah, you can look up data sheets for these if you want to know the specific sizes from the, the uh, parts I'm reading off. And the battery just goes into there. Uh, this is clearly, the three cables are clearly for the, uh, the sensor, so it auto turns on. That's probably like a power switch you could wire into there. And there's extra pads as well. So yeah, actually pretty interesting. Ah, there's another four pads that go down here. Oh, that's a USB port. Okay. And that's just wired. It snakes its way to... Uh, where's it going? Oh, to the top here. Uh, and, yeah, there's some power circuitry there, so that's obviously for, like, battery charger -y stuff. Uh, but, yeah. This is just going to be a ZIF connector underneath here. I see some more inductors, like a switch mode power supply sort of looking thing. And, uh, yeah. And there is a... Ooh. There is a small, like, silk chip, which then goes to the speaker. So that's the amplifier. And more pins that are unlabeled up here in the corner. That might be, like, a programming interface, actually. Uh... I, I guess I'm just going to leave it in here because there's no point in uh, pulling this out and then it, it's probably going to be pretty fragile. So I'm just going to leave it here. I'm going to plug this into a computer and see if anything pops up, what I can do with this. I want to add, I want to try to end this video by adding a video clip of my own to the player and see if I can get it to work. And then also I want to see what these other buttons do. But uh, let's just shut that off. And uh, yep, still works. Uh, give me a sec to play around with plugging this into a computer. I gotta find a mini USB cable. I haven't generally don't use mini USB at all anymore, but uh, let me dig one out. Okay, so I'm ready to plug this into my laptop. This is a data cable and uh, shows a battery charging icon. Then it says devices connected and it popped up as a only a hundred megabyte, actually just slightly less, 93.5, and only one, just under one and a half megs left. If I go into here, there's a folder called video, and here's, yeah, it's like 94.3 megabyte video file. If I uh, go to properties, details, it is 854 by 480, that sort of makes sense for given how the LCD looks. Uh, you can see the bit rates about 3000 kbps, uh, 30 frames per second, and audio is 128 kbps. Uh, you know, two channel stereo, 48 kilohertz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when media created in 1969, I highly doubt that. <laughs> so obviously, that metadata wasn't set. Uh, but yeah. So yeah. Theoretically, then, if I take a video file that uh, is MPEG-4, I might have to encode it specially uh, and probably decrease the resolution and everything. But if it's less than 100 megabytes, I should be able to just put it on here and it should play. I'm going to copy this file off uh, just so that I could put it back on if I ever wanted to for some reason. But uh, give me a sec to play around with this. But yeah, definitely is detecting and uh, charging and uh, it shows up as a drive, so... Uh, let's uh, put something special on here. Okay, so I had it, it showed up as a drive. I copied the original video file off. I put a very special video on and uh, yeah, I disconnected it just now. Let's see if it works, if uh, it'll just play any kind of standard MPEG-4 file. Ah, it's reconnected.
Aha. So there you go. You've just been rickrolled by a video advertisement. This is just an MPEG-4 file I downloaded off YouTube and I didn't transcode it or anything. I just put it on here and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it works. <laughs> Just how fabulous. Only thing that sucks is uh, the internal memory on this is only 100 megs. So uh, this file is only like, it's, I downloaded it at 854 by 480. So it is matched to like the resolution of this screen uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, but you're not going to be storing much. I think this was like 50 megabytes or something using up like roughly half the memory. Uh, but yeah, I mean... This works. Uh, I kind of want to, uh, let's take some tweezers and see what happens when I poke the buttons on the back. Also, what happens if there's more than one video file? Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Just a uh, portable advertisement rickroll. It resets the volume to like max every time you boot. Wow, I'm gonna give this to my friend. and <laughs> Don't explain anything, just have him open this up and see uh, the beauty of Rick Astley. Anywho. <laughs> Uh, let me play around with this some more. Okay, so this is just about done. I put uh, my channel trailer after this. Uh, so let's see, does it continue playing? Yes, it does. So if you just put your file sequentially, it'll uh, work. This is actually 720p too. I don't know what the native resolution on the screen is, but this actually looks pretty good, so... Probably the 854 by 480 of the original the original file that was on here. It was just so that they could fit the whole file on. This probably can the LCD is probably much higher resolution than 854 by 480. Might even be 1080, but yeah, it looks like good at 720, and this works just fine. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, I tried shorting all the buttons with tweezers along the bottom row there, and none of them seemed to do anything. The resistors near them, it's obviously like a resistive ladder. Uh, they're all populated, so it's not like it's missing components. I guess the controller is just not programmed uh, to take input from the rest of those. It might be a thing that you could pay the manufacturer of this to configure it however you want. But as of right now, I can't get it to like skip tracks or like open a menu or anything like that. I'm going to keep trying. There are different headers all over the place, but... Uh, after it's done playing everything there, I guess it just shuts off and that's it. You could uh, press play pause though to, you know, go back in and start playing from the beginning. I wonder if you press and hold. No. Maybe if you press two buttons. Nope. Okay. Yeah. It's not like I can access like a, a track skip sort of thing. That would have been cool. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll play around with this some more, but this is about as far as I've gotten uh, just hacking. It's not even hacking. Uh, it's using this in the way that it was intended, uh, but they didn't intend people to open this up and like put their own files on here and whatnot. But yeah, it seems to work actually pretty well. Uh, so this will be my automatic rickroll uh, in the future. Just have to remember it. Blast audio as soon as you turn it on, so... Yeah, my uh, coworker is going to get a really big kick out of this. So <laughs> uh, I'm just going to throw this on his desk with no explanation. Uh, just put like a post in it that says like open me or something like that. And just I, I just want to see his face. Uh, anywho, yeah, this was sort of a random video. Um, I might try to look up some more information about the, the main chip on there to see if I can rig extra controls on. Uh, then I could just use this as a random little video player thing. I, I don't know what I'd do with it because I have many Android video player, like old phones and whatnot that are significantly better, have more memory, faster, just better in every way than this. But this is just sort of a, a neat little toy, I guess. Uh, anywho, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This was sort of a quick one. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.